fish on. Oh, good one too. Good one. Quite a large fish. Oh my. On this episode, giant eastern brook trout on dry flies. I'm Bill Spicer. This is the new fly fisher. The new fly fisher has been made possible thanks to Newfoundland and Labrador Outfitters Association, Orvis Sporting Traditions, Rio Products, Superfly, fly fishing made easy. On this episode, the new fly fisher crew is 60 miles to the south of Goose Bay, Labrador at the headwaters of the renowned Eagle River at Eagle River Trout Lodge. Strategically located at the narrow section of the river, moving water directly in front of the fishing lodge yields huge eastern brook trout and northern pike. Within a short distance of the fishing lodge, anglers can fish virtually any type of water they prefer. Joining me today is Eagle River guide, Dave Krant. Soft-spoken and easygoing, Dave has years of guiding experience, and this, I'm sure, will make this trip successful. Eagle River's double A-frame fishing lodge offers all aspects of home comfort for the angler. This Canadian fishing lodge has six double occupancy bedrooms, each complete with full bathroom facilities, including showers. Lodge also supplies all the bed linen, towels, face cloths, and soap. Hearty home-cooked meals are prepared by locally trained cooks and served in the main dining room. In the evening, relax around an old-fashioned wood stove, recount the day's exciting fishing action, or plan tomorrow's strategy. Eagle River Trout Lodge tries to ensure the maximum comfort for the guests while still retaining the warm atmosphere. The insect hatches on the eagle are quite healthy. Both mayflies and caddisflies can hatch at the same time. On this particular trip, the caddisflies were more abundant. One effective technique used when caddis are hatching is to hold the rod high and twitch the tip. This will make the fly skitter across the surface of the water, similar to a hatching caddis. Got him. Got him. Good fish too. Another one just rose there. We might be in for an hour's worth of fun. Dry fly fishing for giant eastern brook trout. Nothing like it. These are huge. There's brook trout in other areas, but not the same size as these. He's just about ready, Dave. I'll drag him over top. There we go. Thank you, sir. Nice eastern brook trout. And away it goes. Woo! <laughs> I want to talk about some of the essentials you need when coming to Labrador. First off, even if it's July, you're going to run into cool weather. It could be hot, but it's likely going to be cool. So bring layering clothes. Like myself, I have this vest on that's insulated. I have a shirt and I have a t-shirt. Plus, I wear a rain jacket. It not only protects me from the rain, but it also keeps me warm. And if you get, start getting hot, you can peel layers off. 
But if you're cold and you don't have any extra clothes, you can't put anything on. So always prepare for being cold. Again, also a good set of waders. And I advise you bring a spare set in case you puncture them. If you puncture them, you don't get to, to have your waders and it's gonna severely limit how you fish. Your boots, make sure they're felt sold. The felt grabs onto the rocks here and the rocks are really craggy and, and hard to hold onto. The felt is the best, along with a good wading staff. You must have a good wading staff. That's your third leg. Safety first at all times here. The water is quite cold. And lastly, you must wear a life preserver anytime you're in the boat. And the ones that, that the camp has are large and bulky. So I bring my own and it's, and it's just wraps around your neck. It's, it's, it, it's, got, it's inflatable, but it's really comfortable and it stays out of the way when you're trying to fish. So that's what you need for Labrador in a nutshell. Got him. When the hatch is on, the hatch is on. That's not bad, it's a pound and a half, maybe two pounds. Oh, it's a better fish than I thought. This is a nice fish. Casting, you, you see a rise, you try to figure out which way they're, go, they're moving, because they're cruising in this, this calm wa water here, taking caddis flies. And when you figure which way they're moving and give it a couple of twitches, because caddis flies don't sit dead, they move on top. Oh, that's a decent fish. Got him. About a pound and a half, two pounds. But on a dry fly, that's, that's incredible. Away he goes. <laughs> a lovely place to bring your wife. Um, I'm having a great time, but I love to fish, and I caught my first big brookie on my fly rod. Well, I'm not really that good at fly fishing. I have only fly fished for probably, what, five or six years, so I'm better with a spinning rod, and I've really found it good because I can cast against the wind or whatever, or against the tide, and it really works out good. The next day we took a very long boat ride to a decommissioned armed forces base and to what is called the military pool. Okay, and, and uh, I figure with this wind, they're, they're laying in that channel. They're laying so. on the bottom there most likely, yeah. Okay, well, let's give that a try then. Okay, Bill. There we go. Fish on. There we go. Feels like a decent fish too. Oh yeah, good fish. Woolly bugger fishing for brook trout. We were hoping for dry flies today, but the wind has just picked up and it's just not gonna happen. Maybe tonight when the wind calms down, but right now the wind's up and so we have to go with woolly buggers. So you gotta be versatile and willing to try something different. Now I had a full sink line and it's a little too shallow for that right now. So I went with a floating line and just a weighted woolly bugger and that was, whoa, that was a good one, yeah. There we go. And I got a really nice fish. There we go. And my special glove. This is made from the same mesh that my net is. It's a catch and release mesh. It doesn't hurt the fish at all. Oh. Now that's what I call a giant eastern brook trout from Labrador. On a woolly bugger, but right now, we were, like I said, we were hoping for dry fly fishing, but uh, that's not to be. Winds are, winds are dictating what we're doing today. So I'm gonna let this guy go, and away he goes. The fish are biting, it's just a little difficult to cast because the wind's right in my face, so. Just do your best you can, cast sideways, cast down, right directly at it, and if you know how to double haul, it'll help.
Since the early days of Canadian fishing trips, especially the fly-in fishing trip, the shore lunch has been a big part of the whole experience. A vast majority of anglers have never experienced such a thing. Catching some fish, and then pulling into shore to cook them over an open fire. There are few things more Canadian than the shore lunch. Missed them. Did you see that one? Whoa. Got him. That was a big fish too. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Bending the rod for sure. I'm not saying much folks because I'm concentrating on what's happening here. But I don't care. I got a big fish on. <laughs> oh yeah. Good fish, good fish. Oh my, oh my, look at that, look at that. There's what you got when you come to Labrador and it's on dry flies, caddis flies. I'm gonna let this guy go and away he goes. There's terminology that you should know when coming to Labrador in order to understand what your guides are telling you. First is a rattle. A rattle is a large section of the river that has large boulders and a lot of small boulders beneath the surface. Uh, that's called a rattle. The next thing that you got to know is tide. Tide is actually the current speed. They'll, they'll say go uh, fish in the fast tide or fish in the slow tide. And that just means the speed of the current. And then the third thing is a steady. A steady is steady flowing water with no visual markings. It's just one flow of water. That's called a steady. So if you remember those three terms, you'll know what you, your guide is telling you. One grabbed it when I wasn't looking. Ha, huh. go figure that one. You just never know when it's gonna happen. Oh yeah, good one. I was looking upstream for my next place to cast and the fish hit. There we go. Cat us out. There you go. That's a very nice trout. I didn't expect it. I was getting a little frustrated with the wind and looking for a new place to cast, and he come up and ate it. Very nice. And away you go. usually got her own menu. She had a turkey dinner for Sundays, almond scallop potatoes for Mondays, uh, steak nights. We got uh, codfish, old Newfie codfish, and we go out for shore lunches during the trip, and we have uh, chicken, pork chop. If we don't have it, you don't need it, sir. The next day, we traveled back to the flower pot run. I was really excited as the fish were rising there. We've just arrived at the flower pot pool, which has been the most productive pool that they've had this, this week. And before I dive in and like do what I did the other day, I'm gonna observe. It's really important that you observe first. Don't just go in because yesterday it worked here. There might be fish close to shore, you don't know. So have a look. We've seen a couple of rises. They're more out in the middle. That tells me that the, the hatch is just beginning. So I'm gonna keep my eye out. I'm gonna wade real carefully and not try to, to, to disturb the water. So this is what you first do when you, when you first come to a hole. Don't just barge in, have a look first. Okay, Bill, down beyond the, that tree there, there's one coming up there every now and then. 
So he's, he's most likely lying around that tree. Okay. So good chance you could catch that one. Okay, thank you. Oh, I see him. I seen him. Right in there. Yep. Come on up. Hey, Got him. There you go, Bill. Got him. That's a good one. When they start showing themselves, it's excellent. Yes, sir. Now that was right tight under the alders there, so you got to keep an eye there. That's where most of the caddis flies are, are going to be when, when they're mating and, and, and uh, coming out to, to lay their eggs. Excellent. I don't know how big it is, but it uh, took a nice little, oh, it's a good fish. It's a good fish. Now I, I've, I've picked a, a bigger fly. It's actually a sofa pillow, which is a stone fly imitation, but we got such big caddis flies here, I wanted something big for the water. And it worked. Yeah, it's a decent fish. Just let it tire itself out. It will. Come here, you. Here we go. There you go. Nice, nice brook trout. Really colorful with this one. Look at look at the spots on it. Let him go. Dry fly fishing for a giant eastern brook trout, it's the best, it really is. The hatches on the Eagle River are heavy and all sizes can hatch at the same time. So dry fly suggestions are elk-haired caddis in all sizes, goddard caddis in all sizes, and when fishing subsurface, Woolly buggers in black and also in white work really well. Don't forget to bring some mouse patterns for the times when the trout are aggressive. Got him. That a boy, Bill. It's the reason most of us started fly fishing to begin with is for the dry fly. And when you get them big fish like this on dry flies, it's outstanding. Wowee. <laughs> Angry fish right now. Another good sized brook trout. Got him. Wow. Wowee. <laughs> and he, he wanted that bad because he took it right down into his roof of his mouth. Beautiful. That's a nice, nice brook trout. He's had a run in with a, I think an eagle. If you look down by my hand here, he's got a talon mark in him. Nice fish there. Wowee, away he goes. The hatches I've seen here are three or four different kinds of caddis flies and mayflies. And that's about all I've seen here so far. The sizes, the caddis would be uh, roughly an inch long. There's some that are a half inch long and I've seen ones that were probably a quarter of an inch long. The first week I had uh, 15. This week so far I have 18. And the biggest one I would guess would be six to seven pounds. It was time to leave, but I said just one more cast. What a surprise I got. Yeah, it's my last day here. And we come back to the flower pot where all the action is. And I've got myself another nice fish. We had to move a little farther down. They're in deeper water for right, right now, I think because of the bright sun. And I had a rise and Cast to him and he took it. And this is a bigger fish. She's running out a little bit of line on me. Now that's a brook trout. <laughs> that is a brook trout and he, he ate it completely. Look at that. 
size 12 Goddard caddis. And he ate it, he wanted it bad. <laughs> oh my God, oh my God, this is a big fish. Now, this is a super duper heavy fish. Oh my, what a great fish. Wow, isn't that something? That's at least six, maybe a little better. A little better than, oh my goodness, what a great fish. And, and away he goes, wow we. Well, I've had a wonderful time this week at Eagle River Trout Lodge. I'd like to thank them for inviting us to come. Uh, I've been keeping for hosting us and Dave Krant for guiding us and guiding us well. For more information on this show and others in our series, visit us on the web at thenewflyfisher.com. From all of us here at The New Fly Fisher, thanks for joining us. Tight lines, we'll see you next week. Hi, I'm Mark Melnick. If you enjoyed this video, do me a favor, hit the like button and subscribe today. Now we're putting up brand new videos all the time, so if you wanna be notified when a new one goes up, click that bell icon and it'll come to you as soon as it's uploaded. The New Fly Fisher has been made possible thanks to Newfoundland and Labrador Outfitters Association. Orvis Sporting Traditions. Rio Products. Superfly, fly fishing made easy.